Hi everyone, I'm Sonia and I'd like to welcome you all to this session, Learning to Code, the Good, the Hard and the Exhilarating. And what I'll go through right now is my view on why learning to code is good, how to apply the principles of computational thinking in your code writing and the place of communities in your journey. Uh, just a brief introduction about myself. I am a blockchain developer, I'm currently building Porium a distributed online learning platform for developers who are seeking opportunities to learn various Web3 technologies. I am also a technical writer, maintaining for a few years now a technical blog that covers various subjects, including uh, decentralized technology, open source software, and tech education. You can, of course, find me on GitHub, email, or Telegram at Life. Now, I would like to preface the session by pointing out that regardless of how you found yourself in this tech space, there's of course very many different ways to contribute to software development and yet having a clear reason why you have chosen to learn to code will be very important in how your entire journey pretty much plays out. In my case, for instance, uh, learning to code was an alternative career path that I pursued after a series of events culminated in me losing my job. It was an economic downturn of epic proportions, fueled by hyperinflation, which made business unsustainable, and company-wide layoffs were the somewhat logical response to the skyrocketing cost of business. So when I started working with HTML and CSS, like a lot of developers, two things I quickly observed about the tech space was that one, software is everywhere, making software development one of the most bankable skills. And secondly, I noticed all the secondary skills that I was developing as a result of starting to code. And these are skills that directly and indirectly complement problem solving, which I was able to apply and bring my ideas to life. On the flip side, one of the challenges that I had to contend with was the occasional feelings of inadequacy as a result of the steep learning curve. And if you have read through different developer stories, you will not really be surprised to learn that programmers, even those that we admire, also face these challenges, admitting to making a lot of mistakes and getting lost countless of times when working, when learning a new language or, you know, working with multiple frameworks, libraries and or tools, you know, but amazingly, this is one of the really good things about experimenting with code is that if anyone applies patience, persistence, and consistency in their learning regimen, that they'll most likely get to the hard part of learning to code, which for me was learning to apply the principles or the components of computational thinking in the way that I write and test code and the way that I look at efficient software development. Now, it's been outlined in multiple guides, including a communications of the SEM essay by Jeanette Wing and several other computer scientists that computational thinking is a way of solving problems where a solution, of which there can be many, can be executed by a computer or a human. Computational thinking for developers is the thought process that you run through even before you start writing code. At a high level, each of its principles will guide you, will guide your software design and development from phase to phase until you've created a viable real world solution to a problem. And here, I think it's important to remember that the creativity that one, the creativity that one can explore in software development is only limited by the creativity of human thought. So I, I, I find software amazing because of one of those, because of um, that reason specifically that the only thing that limits what you can build, what you can create is your own, your own thinking. Um, and, and so far we have millions, maybe even billions of software examples that are built on these principles. For instance, 
the application of computational thinking in cryptography, right? Um, because this is an area that I had to study intensively and intently for for a long time before um, I was able to make the transition into uh, blockchain development. In studying the importance of algorithms for cryptographic solutions, I found a series of patterns that form languages from which different rules can be abstracted to create public and private messages and even develop coded language. You know, and a really great example of this is how um, the Enigma machine was built using these principles to, you know, for discrete communication. Now, whether you're building a web-based solution, an iOS application, deploying containers, or even managing libraries, it's generally recommended that you apply these principles. Um, of which some of you may already be familiar with, that is decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction, and algorithmic thinking. Um, what I've found so far is when combined, these four principles will enable you to determine how good you're getting at writing and testing code. Now, it would have been amazing if we could illustrate how each of these principles can actually be applied in code management and code writing, but in the interest of time, I will only be describing what each of these principles actually mean, how they, how they can be applied in the code, and then maybe give um, a high-level use case example. Um, it would have, it was, it would obviously have been amazing uh, to do code demonstrations, but maybe this is something that we can arrange for a workshop uh, sometime down the line. Um, but something that I think a lot of first-time programmers um, like myself really needed to understand the first time I was getting into this is that developing and delivering software product is a challenge that requires understanding all the different variations of project sizes and complexity. And with decomposition, which is the first principle of computational thinking, as a programmer, you'll be able to break down these this, um, complexities into smaller, more manageable problems using exercises like user stories. Uh, or code decomposition, or product release decomposition. And by breaking down each project variation feature into smaller unit tasks, what you'll find is that you'll be able to make more regular progress towards your, pro your product release goals. Um, and you will also be able to get additional people involved in achieving the larger goal when work is broken into isolated tasks that can be done in parallel. Um, another amazing benefit of applying to composition is that you will learn to avoid something that's commonly known as analysis paralysis, where without the constraints of smaller units of tasks, the complexity of discovering, understanding, validating, and even implementing larger tasks will lead to overthinking, overdesigning, and accumulating work that you may never need, right? Which is sometimes referred to as technical debt, right? Um, so this process is a continual exercise from very early on, from, from early feature ideas to low level code changes and even product releases lead times. Decomposition essentially makes this work more manageable. And you know, the next time you're in your code base uh, or you're reviewing your user story or you're just creating your release timeline, look out for the types of decomposition that you could use to make your work easier and maybe even your life easier, <laughs> right? Um, so the second principle of computational thinking is of course pattern recognition. And pattern recognition is the mapping of similarities and differences um, in decomposed problems and finding the commonalities of repetition. And what this is beneficial for is for making um, your work more efficient um, and it can also help you make predictions. 
And lastly, uh, pattern recognition is an, a key feature in building a strong foundation for designing algorithms, right? I mean, as a developer, you will apply pattern recognition extensively to make connections between similar problems in large amounts of data in an efficient way. And one of the ways that this can be reflected in your code is, for example, in the use of a nested for loop that allows rapid data sorting or insertions. And for a nested loop, its logical structure right, um, provides a single way to cause sequential events to build upon each other and allow its process and to build upon each other, right? Um, and I think although each of these processes vary from programming language, uh, say you're working with Python or Java or JavaScript, I'm sure that um, if you do a quick search, you'll be able to find various examples of uh, nested loops that you can use to practice writing these kinds of scripts. Um, there's also multiple pattern recognition tools, right, that we that are currently in the market that are being used for computation of dissimilarities, feature extraction, cluster analysis, and so much more. Uh, I mean, this is this is pretty much a component that covers a lot of the functionality of your code. And the most common use case of pattern recognition is in the design and the development of, say, data analysis solutions or natural learning processing, um, doc document clarification, and maybe perhaps the most popular is facial recognition software, right? Um, and then the third component of computational thinking is, which I've also found beneficial as I have continued to build up my personal coding standard is abstraction. And here it is recommended that every time you start writing code, you should identify the complexity in your solution that users do not need to interact with and hiding it within your code functions. Um, you can hide it in code functions, interfaces, objects, and implementations in layers. Now this process is called abstraction, of course, and it is essentially splitting one function into multiple interconnected functions. And I, I have found that applying uh, abstraction skills is vital for developers who are working in collaborative long-term projects to ensure continuous expressiveness of your code writing. Um, I found it helpful for me when designing code to determine when different processes happen, when or where. Um, I've also I've also found it beneficial to kind of identify the different processes that depend on each other within um, within a, a software itself. And this identification of important information will also enable you as, as a programmer, as a developer, to leave out a lot of unnecessary code. Um, you'll also be able to write documentation for for your solution. And of course, you'll also be able to leave code comments, right? Just the am amazing, all very amazing um, positive side effects of abstraction. And all these different tasks will require you to be able to identify the important information to a user at any given time. It will also enable you to assist your users kind of get familiar with the product in the shortest time possible. I mean, personally, as a developer, I have gone to certain documentations and the ones that I have found easiest to use um, are from software and products that I am essentially still using to date, which is to say that good abstraction goes a long way. Um, and then I think finally, uh, something that I've already touched on when I was briefly describing um, the use of computational thinking in cryptography is algorithmic thinking. And this is a combination of all the three elements that we have covered so far. It involves 
designing algorithms that can determine the appropriate steps to take and organizing them in a series of instructions for solving a problem correctly, right? Um, essentially, you just want to break down every single um, task that is meant to do until a problem is solved and writing, writing it in a manner that this task can be performed by either humans or machines or what we would call in this case an algorithm, right? And that's, that's literally what we call an algorithm. And each algorithm typically has a starting point, a finishing point, and a set of well-defined instructions in between them, right? So these are the instructions that I'm referring to. Like you want to go from point A to point B, um, this is the starting point, this is the end point, and how you can do that. And a practical use case of algorithm design in code writing is with the development of solutions that are increasingly uh, used to automate software development processes for efficient creation and deployment of a software product. And my favorite example of this is, of course, GitHub Actions, which is a product of algorithm design where users can build simple workflows for code reviews, um, branch management, and issue tracking, which in turn levels up the CI, CD pipeline. And being able to, I think, apply all of these solutions within your code development um, and your developer journey will enable you to share your solutions with users quicker, you'll improve the quality of the softwares that you bring to the market. But like I mentioned um, earlier, applying these principles um, in the way that I write code every day is, it was and it still is, I think one of the hardest things to do while, um, or to incorporate in my own personal coding standard as I've been learning to code. But, um, Besides just the good and the hard part of learning to code, there's also the exhilarating part. And I describe it as exhilarating because that's that's the feeling that I get when I think about um, community, the place of community in a developer's journey. And I think community is one of the better outcomes of starting to code or, or learning to code because these are usually groups of like-minded individuals who come together to solve problems and offer different perspectives on particular technologies. And in the right community, in, as a developer, you'll be able to get access to up-to-date information regarding the specific technology that you're interested in. You will be able to receive insightful answers you will get tips and tricks for all levels of developers, um, whether you're just a beginner, whether you're intermediate, whether you're self-taught, whether you've actually studied computer science or any other course. I mean, um, you will also get links to all kinds of resources, talks, research papers, all very crucial information when it comes to learning more about your technology, how to build using a certain type of technology, how to best use it or apply it when, um, it, when you're writing code or when you're building solutions. And I think my favorite of all is that you'll get a chance to meet new friends. Uh, you might get coding partners, you, you might get a mentor, or you might even get business partners. I mean, in my short journey, I have come across some amazing online communities with some of the best people to work with, you know, who have the best attitudes when it comes to solving problems and who apply general industriousness to any sort of work. I have found passion and through all of this, I have been building my interpersonal skills, which I was then able to tap into to better understand what solutions people need and when they need them. So when you join a community and you encourage yourself to, to participate, um, 
one of the ways that I've found easiest to be able to do this is to focus on the specific challenges that you're trying to solve, right? For example, with IPFS, with Gitcoin and other Web3 communities that I've had the opportunity to join and contribute to, you know, community members are working together to develop solutions to challenges within the current structure of the web, hence the call to decentralize the web. Um, but this is just an example of communities that I have found that have been an amazing experience for me. And whichever community become, becomes your home eventually, um, create opportunities for great interactions to learn and to grow. And, you know, this, this is essentially what my journey has been like. And I can't promise that you'll have the exact journey, but expect to face one or two um, of, of the challenges, maybe even all of the challenges that we've mentioned. And the solutions that I have presented may work for you, they may not. Um, you might have to explore more solutions um, than what I've mentioned here. But for any good place to start, I would say start here. Um, GitHub and GitHub Education have a lot of resources for first-time developers, even for just beginners, for students. Um, lots of lots of resources, lots of community members that are willing to help you get started on your journey. Um, but if there's any questions right now, I think I could try to answer them and then we can see how we can get um, as many of you learning to code as possible. Thank you.